Welcome to another Cloud or Node Plus video. My name is Michael Wittig and today I will talk to you about ways to debug connectivity issues in your VPCs. And this is going to be a refresher, which basically means that the capabilities of the AWS platform changed in significant ways in the past, so that we now have new tools that we can use to get the job done. So let's look into uh, what we're going to talk about in this video. So first, I will show you the tools that are available to debug connectivity issues. And I will also provide you some tips that will help you to speed up your investigation. So how do you get the answer that you're looking for uh, as efficient as possible? And last but not least, I also show you some pitfalls that I encountered working with those tools um, while I was searching for issues in my VPC setups. So those are the three things to expect from this video. And now we basically dive into the topic, um, starting with the VPC setup. So um, because I have to uh, prepare something for us to kind of simulate different kinds of issues. So that's what I created. I have two different VPCs, um, VPC one and VPC two, and they are peered using VPC peering. So we can talk to each other um, using those two VPCs. And I have those public and private subnets in each of the VPCs. I have one in availability zone A and then also one in B if needed. So this is just like the slimmest uh, VPC setup that's, that's possible to show you all the issues that I uh, simulate for us. Okay, so what makes a subnet public? What makes a subnet private? So that's just a, a kind of rim, a refresher. So a public subnet has a route to the internet using an internet gateway, while the private subnet doesn't. So that's kind of the differentiation between the two. And remember that subnets by default in AWS in a VPC are routed, so you can talk from each subnet to any other subnet within a VPC, because by default there is a route for that and that cannot be deleted. So that's something to keep in mind when we talk about networking on AWS. Okay, so that's the VPC I'm going to talk about. So when I say, for example, the instance in A public communicates with the instance in B private in VPC one, then you kind of know how things are moving. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind um, during this video. Okay, so what are the tools? So the tool that is uh, around for quite some time is known as CloudWatch Locks and it's still there and we can still use it. And the use case for flow locks when we use them to debug network issues is that we can use them to diagnose traffic that is rejected by a security group or by a network access control list. So those are the two use cases where uh, flow locks are useful uh, in our uh, scenario. Um, besides that, they can be used for many more uh, stuff. So you can analyze the network traffic that goes um, flows in your VPCs. So that's very helpful as well. But for our purpose, that's what you can do with it. Um, the biggest downside of flow logs is that it can take up to 15 minutes until data shows up. And this is really like if you're debugging something, so you make a connection to another instance and then you have to wait for 15 minutes to uh, really know that nothing appears uh, or you have to wait for a couple of minutes to see that actually something appears. So it's kind of tricky and it, it takes a lot of time just waiting for VPC flow logs. Um, besides that, you pay for VPC flow logs um, and the price that you have to pay depends a little bit if you um, ingest the data into CloudWatch Logs or S3. And depending on the service that you use to store those logs, you have to pay a different fee. So for example, I use CloudWatch Logs here. There you pay $50 cent per gigabyte that you ingest and then $3 cent per gigabyte per month that you store. And depending on the um, traffic that could or could not be um, like a huge um, cost driver of your architecture. So usually it is not a big cost driver. Okay, so that's the tool number one. And I I guess that most of you already know it, but then we have a new tool available from AWS and this is called the reachability analyzer. And the use case here is really exactly what we need to do. Um, it answers the question, can A talk to B? And if not, it also provides us a reason why it's not working. And that's the perfect fit for our problem. Um, the only downside I found so far is that it unfortunately doesn't work well if you have multiple VPCs peered with a transit gateway. So that's not going to work. Uh, so you cannot hop from one VPC into another using transit gateway and 
reachability analyzer still makes sense of that. That's not working. So I tried that. So that's why I peered the VPCs using VPC peering in that example. So keep that in mind. If you have a like, complex network architecture using transit gateway, then reachability analyzer is not as useful as you might hope it is. Uh, it still has some support, but it doesn't answer the question if two instances talk to each other, why it's not going to work. Okay, but this is the the, the, the great tool that that's new and this is also why I created this video because I wanted to show you uh, what you can do with reachability analyzer to really speed up your debugging um, experience with VPCs. So that's it. I think the stage is set. So now I present you three different issues that can uh, that you can encounter um, when you work with uh, connectivity issues in a VPC. The first one is I think the most obvious one and I uh, just called this um, the problem where a security group blocks your traffic or it doesn't allow your traffic. So you can kind of uh, rephrase that um, in, in this way as well. So let me show you what um, Flowlox uh, can help us with this problem. And this is how it looks like. Um, so this is the log messages that you will see uh, in CloudWatch logs from Flowlox. And it contains actually quite a few of information in a way that is not super intuitive to use. So each of this line is a so-called flow lock. And the important part here is that I actually filter for the destination address. So that's the IP address I talk to. And I also filter for the destination port, which is port 22 in my example, but it could be any port, doesn't matter. So, and based on this search query, which actually it, use, it looks very like complicated and you have to remember this whole thin, syntax. So uh, I will put that into the, um, the video description and it's also in the AWS documentation. But basically with this query, I can kind of narrow down the problem because I know I want to talk to this instance and it has this IP address on this port. And that makes it much easier to follow what's going on. And for us, the most important part is this um, second last column, which could be either an reject or an accept. And if it says reject, then that basically means that there was something blocking access uh, to this uh, IP address port combination. And this could be in a security group, could also be a network access control list. We don't know this by looking at the flow logs only. But every time you see a reject, you know that either security group or access control list block the traffic. So that kind of helps. Uh, but remember that it can take up to 15 minutes for the data to show up here. So let's look into what the new capability of the network reachability analyzer can help us here. So it is a little bit, um, or the, the VPC console is actually quite uh, cluttered. So you have to scroll down a little bit until you can find the new reachability analyzer. And here you can create a so-called um, a, a analyze path. And what does it mean, uh, analyze path? So I will open uh, up the one that I created um, you basically specify the source, which is an, I, an EC2 instance in this case, and a destination, which is also an EC2 instance in my case. And you can also specify a port and then the reachability analyzer will figure out if that communication is going to work or not. And in my case, it's not. So the reachability status is not reachable. Um, but this is not the only answer that you get out of reachability analyzer. It actually is more powerful. So if you scroll down a little bit, and we get more information. It says um, that none of the ingress rules of the following security groups um, apply. And it already points us to the security group. So with the click, um, with a single click, you will see that this is the security group that was involved in the chain. And here we see the current inbound rules. And as we see, there's only one rule here that allows uh, access on port 22, but only if you come from the bastion host. So what I'm going to do is I will add a rule here that basically says um, I'm going to allow SSH traffic on port 22 from everywhere. So that's an easy fix, right? Um, and I'm going to save that. And then I will return to the reachability analyzer, go back to my um, failing um, path and I will rerun it, analyze path again, confirm that. And now it takes a couple of seconds for reachability analyzer to um, double check again your configuration. And after a, a couple of seconds, you will get the result. So let's wait for that. So great, reachability analyzer came to the conclusion that after our fix, we are now able to reach the destination. 
which is great. And if you scroll down a little bit, you get the whole path um, where um, that is involved from the instance to the Elastic Network interface to the security group outbound. Then we pass the access control list outbound. We pass in the other subnet the access control inbound, security group inbound to the ENI, and finally we arrive at the instance. And that's a pretty cool visualization, I think, also to make sure that you understand what's going on. So that's the first case. And I think the information that you get provided by Reachability Analyzer is much more helpful to debug the problem and also to fix it. So that's pretty cool, um, and I like that. So let's look into another problem that can arise. The second issue that you are likely faced with when you debug issues with uh, VPC connectivity is an access control list blocking the traffic. It could be either inbound or outbound, but whenever traffic leaves or enters a subnet, the access control list of that subnet is evaluated. So let's see how that looks like in flow logs and also how that looks like in the reachability analyzer. So let me start with the flow log. And this actually looks exactly the same as before with the security group. Um, you will see a reject in the flow log. And this only tells us, again, either security group or access control list was rejecting the traffic. But we don't know specifically what the cause for the reject is. But still, we get some indication that something is wrong with either of those uh, two. So let's look into a network reachability analyzer. So I, again, created um, a path here for us. So it goes from one machine to the other machine. And in this case, it tells us that it's not going to work because the network access control list does not allow inbound traffic from this subnet in this VPC. So that's again pretty specific. It all already includes the link to the access control list. So we just have to edit it and then we will see um, if it's working. So let's look at the access control list quickly here. And here we find, okay, there are two deny rules that block the traffic from our subnet. Um, so that's kind of an obvious issue here. We can easily spot that and remove the two rules and go back to reachability analyzer. And then let me rerun um, the analyzers. And again, a couple of seconds um, for network reachability analyzer to, to do its job. And then we can see if it worked. Great, the result is already there. As you can see, the reachability status is now reachable, which means it works as expected. So again, if you scroll down, you get the whole path um, to just double check that everything works um, as expected. So that's great. So let's look at another issue that is a little bit more problematic. This time, it's about a missing route. So this is more problematic to debug with the tool that we used before. And I will show you why. So let's switch uh, to CloudWatch Logs here. And this is what you see in CloudWatch Logs for this problem. There is actually no reject in the logs, but you can see accepts. So from a CloudWatch Log perspective, it looks okay. It could be actually worse. It could also be the case that you would not see anything here at all. That depends on the route configuration. So from this perspective, it looks Perfect, but it's not working. So let's see what the reachability analyzer can do for us here um, to answer that question. Um, so I created another example. And this time it tells us that the route table does not have a route to actually make this flow working. And it again points us directly to the problem. So let me see um, what we can do here. So this is the route table. And now um, remember that we have two VPCs, VPC1 and VPC2, and they are peered using VPC peering connection. But when you peer two VPCs, you don't, you not only need a peering connection, you also need routes in all the route tables on the left side and on the right side. And here we actually miss a route. So there is no route to tell um, or to kind of define that a, a packet that, that goes to the VPC1 should be routed over the, the, the peering connection. That's what I'm going to add. So the IP range of the VPC1 is 10.1.00 slash 16. And this should be, um, uh, sorry, should be routed using the uh, VPC peering connection. And if I save this, um, the route is there. So now we can send actually back the, the response. So we will, uh, 
see if reachability analyzer also thinks that it's working now. And again, you will notice that it will take some time um, to uh, update the reachability status. Great, again, we received um, an update. It is now reachable, it's now working. We fixed the problem. So again, if you scroll down, um, you now see the full path. And this time it's a little bit more involved, right? Because we um, have this VPC peering in the middle here. So that's uh, also pretty cool. And if you view the reverse path, then this is basically kind of the thing that was missing before. And um, so the, the answer was not able to get back to us because of a missing route. So that's pretty cool. And I really like the network reachability analyzer. Uh, it really provides pretty good, um, like I would say, explanations for why things are not working and also like the links directly to where you can fix the problem. That's pretty cool. So two pitfalls um, that I have encountered. First, the flow logs don't really help you with missing routes. So they are really only helpful for access control list problems and security group problems. So if there's something wrong on the routing layer, then um, this is not a way to debug the problem. So you can basically can kind of just forget about flow logs. They will not help you. Um, and there's a pitfall with reachability analyzer as well um, that I encountered. So what I tried is I um, simulated the communication from a machine in a public in VPC one to a public in VPC two. And it turns out if I use the private IP addresses, it works as expected um, because we have the peer in connection. And then I switch to the public IP addresses of both instances. And then reachability analyzer told me that this is not uh, reachable, which is not true because it crosses. Uh, I mean, if you go outside into the internet and it began back from the internet into the machine, then it actually would work. But that was not something that reachability analyzer would understand. So it, it doesn't really help you with public IP addresses. So that's at least what I think. Um, so, but as long as you try to debug the network in terms of private IP addresses, it is the perfect tool for the job. So I highly recommend it. And um, there's actually a cost for um, the, the tool and you pay uh, $10 cents per query that you run. Um, and I think that's um, um, okay. So there's no uh, storage fee or things like this. So you really only pay for when you have a question and when you really want to debug a problem. So that's what I like about um, the, the flow look, uh, sorry, the reachability analyzer. Okay, so that's it. That was my uh, refresher on how to debug network connectivity issues in your VPCs using the new capabilities that AWS provides us. If you have any questions or feedback for us, then feel free to visit community.cloudonout.io and um, tell us your, your feedback. We are always looking forward to hear from you. So thank you very much for listening. We will see us other uh, in one week with the next video. Have a great day. Bye.